Game Gasm, I'm Bren. I'm Jay. And today we're talking about Fighting the Climaxy! <laughs> Here we are again with another 2D fighter from the crazy land of Japan that we love so much. And what's different about this one? I mean, apart from its very odd Western translated title. Yeah, apart from that. Um, it's new? Well, yeah, but this one is a celebration of the 20th anniversary of ASCII Media Works, if that's how you pronounce it. Famed for their books and magazines, this popular publisher decided to make a fighting game based around characters from books that they've published. Aha, pretty cool. Yeah, and there's some odd crossovers too, which we'll get into later. The game was released in the Japanese arcade back in 2014, with a console version finally reaching our shores on October 16th, 2015. The story is confusing, as you would imagine it to be, with characters spouting out words and names from the offset, as if you've been following the characters for years. Which, if you're a fan of ASCII Media's light novels, you would know. It's a pretty weird mashup, featuring characters from other game franchises and nods to other game worlds. There's one stage that's set on a Sonic the Hedgehog backdrop, and the character Akira from Virtual Fighter features as the game's boss and a playable character. It's pretty strange and we didn't know what was going on, but unlike other Japanese fighters we've seen, where it's all about the boobs and crude references to sex, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, Mr. Defensive. Anyway, this game is as clean as a whistle, with not one sexy reference in sight. Wait, wait, what? what what's that? Good grief. Okay, we'll just gloss over that one, shall we? Like most fighters, you're not here for a compelling story, and this one isn't going to have you on the edge of your seat with incredible plot twists and well-rounded characters. Haha, <laughs> well-rounded, you say? <laughs> Easy now. With any fighter, it's how well it works, and the gameplay in Fighting Climax is darn good. It's easy to pick up and learn most of the character's moves, and it doesn't baffle you with loads of different power gauges and bells and whistles, but they are all in there. It does a much better job of letting you learn the combat than other titles, and the controls aren't too strict with timings, so you don't have to be Bruce Lee in order to pull off some of the game's more challenging fighting moves. But as always, there is plenty of room and scope for the veteran 2D fighter gamer to become a master of every character. In each fight, you have a support character that you can command with two simple button presses. There's a cooldown time on their use, and when used at the right time can turn the tide of battle. It can be something your opponent really doesn't expect until it's too late. Each of the support characters have different abilities. Some will attack and some can offer defensive moves. Think of it like the support character usage in Marvel vs Capcom for example. It's along those lines. Now most of the characters in the 14 strong roster are female characters, but add to this the 23 assist characters and there's quite a lot of variations that you can use and learn to find what's best for your playstyle. The movesets and specials require a lot of double button presses, which I personally find more difficult to do on a controller. But seeing as the game was designed for the arcade, then this shouldn't surprise you. But for the best play experience, we always recommend a great fight stick as your gaming weapon of choice. The graphics are beautiful 2D styled and are as fluid as ever. 2D fighters have come on a long way, and Fighting Climax proves that there's still plenty of room for high-end 2D fighters on the market. Some people may find its hectic presentation of flashy slashing and magic swooshes very confusing, but whilst playing it, it all kind of makes sense. Plus, if you're watching this review right now, you're probably the kind of gamer that really loves your 2D fighters anyway, and you eat flashy swooshy graphics for breakfast. The sound is spot on, a pumping J-pop soundtrack accompanies the fighting, and the weapons and blasts are really effective. The special moves are awesome and feel really powerful due to the amazing sound effects. <laughs> The voice acting on the characters is your usual cute Japanese girls and crazy Japanese angry men. And if you get the special edition, they chuck in the soundtrack for you on a separate CD. An audio CD? Yes, I know, they still exist. Oh, next you'll be telling me there's a full colour manual in the box with great character art that shows their move lists. Mate, there is. Oh. My. God. So overall, Fighting Climax doesn't really do anything differently to other 2D fighters of the same ilk, but it stands out with its unique characters, great fighting, plenty of modes to choose from, and much more, including character art, voice samples, and an online leaderboard for all you score whores out there. Punching this one in the face with the Gamegasm 7. 
A pleasant surprise for 2D fighting fans. Fighting Climax is definitely worth adding to your collection. A fighting Climax! <laughs> And there we are, so that was Fighting Climax. Yeah. A quirky 2D fighter on the PS3. Yeah, Denki Bunko. That's that it's like Denki Bunko Fighting Climax, but I'm not ever sure if I'm actually pronouncing that right, so Denki Bunko. Den Bunko. Bunko. Co. Co with a K, I think. I think. Anyway, yeah, so that was uh Fighting Climax, we'll just call it that. Um <laughs> weird fighter that came out just uh like a few weeks ago and uh, it's actually it's it is really good. I really enjoyed it. Like just like all the characters are really easy to pick up. It's like one of those you know how some fighters can completely baffle you. Yeah, and, Arcana Hearts brings to mind. Right, yeah, I mean it, it's good, but it takes you a while to really like sink into the characters and actually get to know what the hell it is you're supposed to be doing. But with Fighting Climax, it's relatively simple. Like, the character moves are nice and easily laid out. You know, it's nice to just get in there and just fight rather than, oh, I've got to, you know... Look at the move list. And, yeah, and, yeah, and be, like, perfectly timed with every combination, like, just to get a move right. Or the combos seem to be, you know... It feels like you can chain together a lot of moves very yeah, easily. Quicker and a lot more fluid. Yeah. And I suppose the transition from the arcade is a little bit weird for a controller as well. It is mainly because a lot of the moves use the, the double buttons. Yeah. And obviously that's much easier when you've got the big chunky arcade buttons to just hit two buttons at the same time. So that's why I'd always recommend a fight stick. And it's going to be much better and much easier to play on a fight stick, but it still works on a pad. So, uh, overall, yeah, really, really good fighter. And the Sonic stage completely threw me out. I was like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, like, Sega's got to throw Sega in there somewhere. Of course they have. Of course they have. Anyway, that's all the time we've got for today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave us a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Brent. I've been Jane. And we've been Game Gatham. Gatham.